Jesus, when Jesus came, you got to understand, Jesus never came to start a religion. Jesus came and he brought a kingdom. See, what happens when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I, I, I preach to the youth and I tell them, this is, Jesus is like the greatest cheat code of all time. You remember playing the video game Super Nintendo, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B, select, start, and it unlocks the... See, Jesus unlocks a side of us that we never knew existed before. It's called the spirit. Come on, somebody. It's the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. And, you know, when Adam fell, he brought the whole world down with him. And so many demons entered into this world that are still here today, by the way. But Jesus showed up. And it's interesting because the Old Testament doesn't speak a whole lot about demons. They're in there, but it's not. And, and all of a sudden, here comes Jesus. He brings the kingdom. He says, repent for the kingdom's at hand. And he goes in the synagogues and the churches and he starts casting demons out of people. And he's casting demons out of people. And he's casting demons out of people. And he's healing the sick and all this crazy stuff's happening. And they're like, what is going on with this? You see, but Jesus opened up this new realm of our understanding. You know, how many people know that when you try to come to church, sometimes you start getting headaches, you start getting confused. How many people know that is the work of demons? That's the work of these demonic entities that Jesus said that we have authority now over since now that we're in Christ. And so, listen, this is what I do in evangelism. I started to look at everybody, even if they're not not in Christ, they're prisoners at war. You understand, when you got born again, we didn't get born again into a playground. You were born again onto a battlefield. And even the people that are out there that don't know Christ, they're in the middle of a battlefield. And these demons are, listen, demons cannot do anything. They, they want bodies to inhabit. And so they inhabit people. That's why you got to fill your house with the Holy Spirit and not allow those demons to come in. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, you know, and, and, and today is Pentecost Sunday, guys. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Sunday, the day that God sent the Holy Spirit, that means 50 days after the sacrifice, the apostles were in the room and the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them and they received the power and went out and became witnesses everywhere they went. I don't know why, but for some reason in America, we didn't catch it until the 1900s. Who's heard of Azusa Street? You ever heard of Azusa Street? If you haven't, go back and research. I started, you know, we talked about this this weekend, but the Azusa Street Revival, they're in there crying out to God for hours and hours and hours because they read in the Bible that John the Baptist, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but there is one coming after me that is mightier than I, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. They caught that. They said, there's something missing here in our walk. There's so we are, listen, here's the thing, guys. I know I'm getting fired up. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, dead, dead Christianity is coming to an end. Powerless Christianity is coming to an end, guys. We have to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that's what this Pentecost, that's what this is all about. He gives the authority back in our hands, hallelujah, to say, no, I'm done with this demonic oppression. No, I'm not taking this stuff anymore. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to cast you out. Praise God. But you have to have the authority within you. You have to understand what God did to you on the inside of you guys. And so listen, I only got a couple of minutes, but you know, I want to talk for a minute about water baptism because there are people here that want to get water baptized. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, God showed it to me like this, and I'm going to share it with you. I'm, I'm not going to, I can't, I don't have a whole lot of time to go into it, but you got to understand, water baptism is so much more than just you getting wet, guys. It's a lot more. And listen, we've heard it taught that it's a public declaration of your faith, of a, an, inward con, an, outward, an outward showing of an inward confession, and that's absolutely true, but that's only part of it. How many people know that's the natural part of your water baptism, but something spiritually happens to you in that water, y'all. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, hold on, let me get my Bible out just to make sure I'm quoting it right. I know all these verses, but if you want to get it, Romans chapter 6, verse 4, I got it right on the front of my Bible right here. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. It says, therefore, hold on, I'll go there. Let me just, I'll go there so I don't misquote it. <laughs> I know I won't, but praise be to God. Romans chapter 6 is an amazing chapter, but Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Listen to this. It says this, guys. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. The Bible says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned, and these signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name, they will speak with new tongues.
tongues. In my name they shall pick up anything deadly and nothing by any means shall hurt them and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's not what I said. That's what your Bible says. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, the first sermon ever preached by somebody who was a born again, spirit filled Christian and his name was Peter. He got filled with the Holy Spirit and he went out with power and he started to preach and tell the people, listen, you guys just crucified your Messiah. Peter stood up with boldness and told all the Jews, you know what you just did? You crucified your Messiah. And he again convicts them so hard in their heart because they realize that what Peter is saying is true. They say, well, how, what do we do? And he says, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's Acts chapter 2 verse 38. So water baptism is so much more than you just getting wet. Listen, God showed me like this, y'all. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new, right? So listen, when a woman is getting ready to give birth, this is what God showed me. When a woman is getting ready to give birth, what happens to your body before you give birth? Your water breaks. Who said it? The water breaks. Thank you. So listen, so when the water is breaking, you know that a new, a new life is getting ready to appear. Okay, now think like this, y'all. In that water, now come on now, when you're going in that water, you're going down and all of your sin and your old man, your old, everything is going down in that water. And when you come up out of that water, you are a new creation in Christ, y'all. I'm telling you, there's another realm that's happening right now. There's two realms. There's a natural realm and there's a spiritual realm. And angels and demons are in this other realm. And they're watching everything that we do. I talked about this yesterday. But listen, when you go down in that water, they're seeing the old you go down and they're seeing Christ come up out of that water. Because it's supposed to be no longer you that live, but it's supposed to be Christ that lives in you. Praise God. And listen, do you come up? They come up, they see that. And, and that, I'm telling you, that's what's happening to you spiritually. It's not just that you're getting wet and, and it is part of it and praise God it is part of it but there's so much more that happens to you this water baptism thing God started to show me I'm not saying this is what saves you listen you confess with your mouth believe in your heart that's what saves you I believe that that's what gets you born again but if you want to enter into the kingdom the Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 5 listen this rocked me man this stuff started to rock me John chapter 3 verse 3 and John chapter 3 verse 5 Jesus comes to Nicodemus in the middle of the night Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he's asking him, we know that you're from God. We know that you're from God. How are you doing these things that you're doing? And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus says, well, what are you talking about? In verse 5, now go to verse 5, he said something interesting. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot yep. enter the kingdom of God. That's not what I said. That's what your Bible says. So whether you believe that's the word or the water or whatever you think, it doesn't matter. But the Bible says that if you are born of the water and the spirit So what I'm telling you is when you're going down Listen, you're going down one way When you come up, it's a whole Look, and God is giving birth to a whole new creation here on the earth And that's you Come on, somebody Man, I started to believe this stuff And it changed my life, y'all It started to change me Because I really believe that God himself I am his son I'm a partaker of the divine nature And it's no longer me that live But it's Christ who lives in me Hallelujah the Bible says you become a partaker of the divine nature through his precious promises. So it's through the renewing of the mind. It's at Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God. So, listen, so spiritually you're already done, praise God. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 that you are complete in him. That's what your Bible says. That's spiritually, praise God. Spiritually, when you get born again, God puts himself back on the inside of you, huh? Hallelujah, man. And the water baptism is breaking a covenant that you made with death. That's what that's all about, y'all. It's a burial service to the old man. Hallelujah. That's what water baptism is, y'all. I'm telling you. Praise God. <laughs> Not only that, you're also welcoming the new creation into your life, showing everybody, proclaiming to the whole world and this angelic realm and the demonic realm that I am breaking my covenant with death and I am signing a covenant with life, praise God. Hallelujah, man. Man, this stuff gets me fired up, y'all. 
And listen, then you come up out of that water and we pray for you to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and he enters into your veins like you've never experienced before. Praise God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Praise God. The power of the Holy Spirit. Not only, listen, I'm telling you guys, this is not something that I just up here to preach. This is something that I live, baby. Every day, everywhere I go, listen, to my shirt, I'm living in the kingdom now, praise God. Listen, I'm here, but I'm up there, praise Jesus. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world, praise God. Come on, y'all. And it's not just for me, that's for each and every person in this room. If you only knew the power that you had within you, listen, the devil is so scared of you finding out who you really are. The devil is so scared of you finding it out, because once he knows, he's defeated every single time. Come on, y'all. It's the Holy Spirit, praise God. Come on, y'all. We got to get this stuff, man. And listen, you might think, people are like, man, Justin's radical. No, this is normal Christianity, baby. If you read the book of Acts, this is all they were doing. They went about, preached the gospel, healed the sick, cast out demons. They made the earth look like heaven. Sounds like Jesus to me. Come on, somebody. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise Jesus. Man, come on, y'all. We got to get up on this, y'all. Man. <laughs> I hope y'all are okay. I did not plan on going here, y'all. This is this must be the Holy Ghost, bro. Come on, man. Listen though. <laughs> Guys. You notice I didn't even look at my Bible there. One time, Romans 6, 4. And after that, a whole bunch of scriptures just came flowing out. I'm going to tell you something right now. And I believe this to be absolutely true. The de Listen, once the Word... Listen, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Talking about Jesus, right? right. Listen... The, the word is only the word until you read it, but once it becomes real to you, once it takes on a place where, listen, you, Nate, nobody ever going to tell me that this word ain't real. It has become real to me. It has become flesh to me, praise God. So when the word becomes flesh to you in your life, you start walking around and you start looking, acting, and speaking just like Jesus did. I'm not saying that I'm Jesus, but I got that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lives within me, praise God. Come on, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. I'm not saying that I'm Jesus. But listen, if the, if the rulers of this world would have known, they never would have crucified Jesus. Why does it say that? Because when Jesus was here on the planet, the Holy Spirit lived in one person. But when Jesus got crucified and put on that cross for each and every one of us, he died that death for each and every one of us. He looked at you. He knew. He knew you personally when he was up on that cross. He, when he was taking the beatings at that whipping post, can you imagine? He was sitting there getting beat every day. He was taking the chain. He was getting beat. And every time he got beat, you know what it was? Wham, he was being, bam, there goes diabetes. Bam, there goes cancer. Bam, there goes suicidal thoughts. He was taking them for us, praise God. He was taking every one of them for us. Praise God, man. And he did all that, and he put himself on the cross, and he got raised, and he rose from the dead, and he sent back his Holy Spirit. Now the devil doesn't got to deal with one Jesus. Now he gets to deal with all of these little Jesuses sitting in this room, praise God. And I'm not saying that you're Jesus, but you got that same spirit. Come on, y'all. It's the Holy Ghost, man. Listen, I'm telling you right now, he is the most important person on the planet. His name is the Holy Spirit. God the Father in heaven, Jesus in heaven, Holy Spirit here on earth. Come on y'all and he caused wreck everywhere he went man he made the earth look like heaven praise God and we got that same mandate wow come on y'all it's just got to become so real to us this thing's got to be so real that it becomes more real than this natural world that's it y'all listen I'm in the world again you're in this world you got to have one foot in this world God put us here for a reason I'm all about prayers man I love prayer I love what sister was saying about the revival that's coming to Flint but at some point it's going to take the sons of God to start arising and awakening to the truth of who God created them to be. That's all I'm saying, man. Let's put some action behind. Listen, these intercessors and these prayers have been praying for Flint for years and years and years. And praise God for their prayers. We need them intercessors. But at some point, we have to arise in the power of the Holy Spirit because this generation, they want to see something real, y'all. They're tired of the dead religion. They're tired of hearing about Jesus. They want to see Jesus. Listen, we can talk about Jesus and talk about Jesus. And I love I'm talking about Jesus, but at some point he's got to become real with inside of each and every person here. That's when we're going to start to see real
real change and real transformation that starts in Flint and starts to burn to the thumb and burn to the rest of the state of Michigan and the rest of the world is going to see God is here in Michigan. God is here in Flint. Praise God. And it's not just something that we talk about. It's something that we live, baby. Come on, y'all. This is it, man. I'm telling you, we're on the verge of seeing. We're already in. I believe we're already in revival. I believe that with my whole heart. Listen, we go out witness. Everybody loves and talks about God and Jesus. And they know about Jesus, but do they have a relationship with him? Do they know this truth of what happened at water baptism, that you actually died and you're now a new creation in Christ? Man, you know that. Come on, y'all. Praise God, man. And listen, we do. We go through things here on the earth because the demons are still here. Listen, the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus... Jesus is seated, waiting for his enemies to become his footstool. That means Jesus' job is done and he's waiting on the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ to pick it up and start to finish the work that he started. Praise God. The war is already won, but there's still battles to be fought. The war is already won, but there are still battles to be fought. We ran the end of the book. We know what happens. We know that we're victorious, right? But there's still sickness. There's still demons. There's still suicidal thoughts. These things are still here that God led us so we can go out and crush their head and put them back underneath the authority of Jesus Christ. Come on, y'all. Y'all, man, I'm telling you, man. This is something that you can live every single day in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. But you're not going to have it without that Pentecost Holy Spirit filling the inside of your vein. Listen, everything dramatically changed in my life. Not when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, but when I surrendered my life fully to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's when things started to change. Praise God. I was a Christian for a long time and I never prayed for anybody. There was no boldness in my life. There was no power in my life because I was missing the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This is what Pentecost is all about praise God oh, come on y'all and listen if we were all operating like this listen I'm not just up here preaching a show I could like I said the other day you could take all of this away from me and you'll still find me on the streets praising Jesus you'll still find me praying for the sick it doesn't matter take this platform take it all away lock me up in prison everybody in prison is going to hear about Jesus baby I might just be praising him in the middle of the night and they might just open the chains and I might just walk out and just tell everybody about how good he is oh, come on y'all Praise God. The devil has got us so dumbed down in America, guys. Listen, I'm telling you right now. I know I got to, man, I know I'm, I'm over on time. But listen, last thing, guys. The, uh, you got to understand that in America, we, it's the greatest country in the world. But we have the most distractions in the world as well. We have video games. We have social media. We have all these other things that are pulling for your attention. Do you think that that's a coincidence? If you were to get your mind focused on the things of God, you get your mind focused in the Bible. Let the word become flesh within you start to walk this thing out you don't need Hollywood listen you don't need Hollywood you just need a light filled with the Holy Spirit walking around Bible says Acts chapter 10 verse 38 Jesus how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good healing all who were oppressed of the devil first John chapter 3 verse 8 says the Son of God was manifest for this reason to destroy the works of the devil come on man he ran me over this I was a 14 year drug addict. if you didn't hear my story 14 years I was chained up in this drug addiction. And I've been free for five and a half years now, and I'm never turning back to that garbage, man. I'm not. That demon of addiction had me chained up for way too long. Now it's my turn to kick him in the head and start telling people about Jesus. Come on, y'all. Praise God. We are not on defense anymore. Jesus gave us the ball so we can go and score a touchdown and start to go on offense. We are on offense, church. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. What do gates do, guys? Gates just stand there. The church is supposed to be going out to kick those gates down and advance the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, y'all. We can really do this. I'm telling you, we're going to see this in our lifetime. I promise you that we will see this in our lifetime. Our youth are catching this thing. If we can just have the children get filled with the Holy Spirit, they got the same Holy Spirit that I got. Can you imagine a whole generation start to rise up from the grassroots of just something that God's doing here, not just in Michigan, but all over the United States? It's going to happen, guys. But it's going to take us to stand up and start to believe and really stand up. Come on, y'all. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. The whole world is eagerly awaiting for the manifestations of the sons of God, man. Come on, y'all. I love you guys, man. I love this guy. I love the kingdom of God. I love God's people. You're all God's people, man. He loves you all so much.
And maybe you didn't listen. Maybe you didn't know about this water baptism thing. Maybe you didn't know the seriousness. Maybe you were baptized into religion. Maybe it's time to get rebaptized into Christ. Because when I got baptized as a baby, I had no idea what that stuff meant. But once I found out what it meant and I broke the covenant with darkness and I got, uh, listen, uh, some chains fell off my life just by getting we water baptized. I, I don't know why. It's just, it's, it's, you got to put faith behind what you're doing. And so if you put faith behind saying, yes, I'm going to die to my old man. Today I'm breaking covenant with addiction. Today I'm breaking covenant with everything in my past. And I'm going down in that water, God. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to fill me with the Holy Spirit when I come out of that water. And I'm going to be on fire for you, Lord. Come on, man. Jesus will do it. He wants us to do it, y'all. So look, in a minute here, I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if I'm going to let Lonnie come up and whatever you guys want to do, but we're going to go out and we're going to water baptize some people today. And I, want, I would love all of us to go out there because it really is. We're going to have a funeral today. Some people are going down today, praise God. And they're being died with Christ and they're going to arise in the newness of life. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate that life with them, praise God. Let's go out here on these streets and share somebody with the hope. The Bible says that Christ in you is the hope of glory, man. So that means you have a hope within you that the world needs. Maybe you are not bold enough to go out onto the streets and hold a sign. Maybe all it takes is you text in your brother, text in your mom, text in your dad, text in your text in somebody just saying, I love you. I'm just thinking about you. I'm praying for you. That's if you if that's all you can do for right now, praise God. But I encourage you, invite them to church. Tell them that they're praying for them. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that God's got a plan for their life. That's all you gotta do. Plant the seed. Let the Holy Spirit work in that seed in their life and you'll see man God will touch them through your obedience to step out in faith come on this weekend we saw people go out and touch lives that like little Anderson said I'm not praying for nobody I said that's okay you don't have to and by the third time he was out praying for people praise God it's fun it's fun and you know what? Yes, you might get rejected, but they're not rejecting you. Remember, you're not living anymore. It's Christ living through you. And so they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Christ in you. So don't take it personal, guys. People are, listen, if you start to think and look at people like they're prisoners at war, you'll start to have compassion for them and understand that God loves them. I talked about it day two. We talked about the lost coin, how the coins don't lose value. Even though they're lost, there's no value lost. They have the same value as each and every person in this room, guys. God loves the lost people just as much as he loves the found people. If not, maybe even more. I mean, he's because he, he wants them to come to repentance. He's saying, God, there's a better plan for your life, son. I'm, and he's waiting with arms wide open, just waiting the whole time. The Bible says, and not imputing his trespasses to them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him should never perish but have everlasting life. It doesn't say that God was so fed up and sick of this world that he sent his son. No, God loved the world. He loved the world so much that even when I was a sinner, when I was a 14-year drug addict, he sent his son to die for me on the cross. Come on, man. He allowed me to have a brand new life, that I can live a new life, that I can live a life free of chains and addiction, and I can live a life. And he taught me, listen, without God, I didn't know how to love my wife. I didn't know how to love my children. I didn't know how to be a good dad. I didn't know how to be a son. But with God on my side and learning, he was showing me. He's saying, son, I'm going to show you how to be the person that I created you to be. You're living a lie, son. Let me show you your true identity. Let me show you who you are in my life. Praise God. All right, y'all. Man. Come on, y'all. Today is the day. Maybe, listen, maybe there's some people in this room who have never fully surrendered it all to Christ. That's really all I did in that parking lot when I gave it all to God. Listen, God, listen, you can fool me, you can fool Lonnie, but you ain't fooling God. He sees everything that you do. Listen, and the more that you surrender over to Him, the more that He can live big through your life. Listen, you got to let your light so shine. People need to see the hope that you have within you guys so today guys we're gonna go out i am fired up i appreciate y'all having me this weekend y'all i did not plan on any of this guys <laughs> God, man. hey i just want to say thank you to everybody i know i'm a little different flavor I, I know i'm a different flavor i understand that and if you've ever my name is justin farinbrook i'm sorry i never introduced myself i'm in saginaw michigan i was really really lost and now i'm really really found praise god that's it that's it. And I just, I just believe. That's it. I just believe, man.
I just believe that God can do something. Listen, I look, I read these other men of God, like John G. Lake, and some of these mighty, mighty men of God, and I love these men of God, but at some point, you have to turn around and say, that's going to be me. Yeah. So I decided three years ago that I'm not just going to look up to these guys, that I'm going to be one of them in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. And that's not just for me. That's not a pride thing. That's saying, you know what? I'm taking my responsibility that God called me to be a world changer, to change my generation. I have determined that before I leave this earth, I will make a dent on this earth for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying, not for my glory. I want them to know that God lived through my life. I want them to know that God is real, that He is who He says He is, that He truly can transform a life from the inside out, that He can deliver people from addiction. He can heal the sick. He can do these things. Come on, y'all. I just love the Lord, guys. And I'm so glad that y'all invited me here to the ark. I appreciate it. Amen. I appreciate it. You know, we're going to go out there in a minute, but if you guys could, just pray for me, please. This is what I'm going to end it on. Please pray for me. You want to donate? That's great. I'll take, I'll take the finances as well. But listen, I need your prayers, y'all, because I believe. Listen, God showed me this. The last thing I'm going to say about prayer. God showed me this one day. I was laying in bed with my wife, and God, there was a force field around our house. And there was missiles being shot at our house. And I was waking up. You know, you know when you're like first waking up out of sleep, you're kind of in that spot where you don't really know what What's going on but you're kind of waking up well I was in that moment and these missiles were being shot and I woke up and I seen these missiles being shot at our house and they hit the force field and it, it went out hit the force field and it went out hit the force field and it went out and I said God what is going on and he said son those are the intercessors that have been praying for you that force field is their prayers and it's stopping the fiery darts of the enemy from hitting your house I said oh my goodness I said oh my goodness and I at that moment I started to have a much deeper appreciation for the power of prayer because there really is a demonic force out there that wants to take you out but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world praise God Amen. all right guys listen kingdom fire ministries I got a table out here <laughs> can you grab one of my prayer cards use it as a bookmark and just pray for us we're tra we're transforming a bus into a motorhome we go all over the state and this is what I do full-time I just my God has sent me here as a, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry I'm believing that you heard the Holy Spirit today now I didn't plan on none of this I had no idea what we were going to do today. We didn't have any plan at all. But listen, if you need to rededicate your life to Christ, now is that time. Maybe you've never truly accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now is your time. I'm going to open up these altars. The Holy Spirit is here, praise God. I'm going to open these altars up for anybody that wants to come forward. And you want to accept the provision of Jesus Christ into your life. You want to become that new creation. You want to be water baptized. You want to be Holy Spirit filled. You want the boldness of the Holy Spirit in your life. Allow us to pray for you. Come up front. The Lord will minister to you. You, can, you, can, you don't have to come up front, but there's just something about responding. God loves it when you respond to the call.